Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and the patch notes have been dropped. Or at least I'm pretending like I'm not recording this ahead of time as you can see by the draft. Blizzard provided me with these early, but yes, we'll know, we now know all of the changes that will be going live later today. Should be like an hour or so after this video goes live around 10 a.m. Pacific. We're gonna go through each change, including Reno being outright murdered, Quasar being murdered, a lot of cards just being killed. Like they're actually gutting cards that are problematic. We haven't seen this in ages, and honestly, I welcome it. And as always, if you enjoyed the content on the channel, feel like I've earned your subscription, please hit that sub button down below. Give the video a like, it helps out a lot as we're on the road to 90 thousand subscribers so the patch notes will be linked down below there's a bunch of battlegrounds changes too um they're still doing the pay to win crap but other than that there's battlegrounds changes and we have dev comments before we get into the actual changes here with the goal of this patch is to focus on the great dark beyond the power level of new decks in archetypes is lower than we intended it to be and older archetypes are more dominant than we'd like to make new decks and cards stand out more, we're weakening a number of cards, mostly from older sets, and strengthening others, all from the great dark beyond. And this paragraph here, really important, and I'm very glad they have said this, our long-term ambition is for the overall power level of the game to be closer to the great dark beyond than the power level of the sets before it. Basically, yeah, they, they wanna scale power back, which we haven't heard them say like in forever. That basically never happens. Uh, but we think some buffs are warranted and needed to hit our immediate goal, encouraging exploration in the great dark beyond between balancing our immediate and long-term goals. Plus the sheer number of changes in this patch, we expect there'll be some level of follow-up adjustments that we plan to work on in the next balance patch after we see how these changes affect the meta coming before uh, winter break, so before Christmas. So maybe Sonya and Zilliax are problematic like I'm worried about it. They could be hit then too. So they are planning on doing one more patch before the next mini set. That's a great paragraph to hear. And I, I think a lot of us are gonna be very thankful for that considering I a lot of us, not everybody, a lot of us though, feel the power level in the game has just gotten to be way too much. Um, in deciding which cards to bring down in power, we looked at the three major categories, one being overly powerful cards and archetypes from older expansions, two, cards that led to frustrating experiences, even if not overly powerful, and three, cards that were overly hostile to new expansion cards and mechanics like starships. And well, speaking of that, the first one here is Reno and the battle cry is being reworked. Um, he will remain to be uh, still 10 mana, but if your deck started with no duplicates, remove all enemy minions from the game. So he will just poof enemy minions. No, he will not destroy locations, no dormants, and he will not restrict the board space. He's outright gutted. He's outright gutted at 10 mana. You can't play this and be competitive. But again, the cards had its time. And as someone who enjoys the archetype and stuff, I get it, like I get it. And they do say, they do try and explain it here. Reno has been a polarizing card since its release. He's a necessarily strong payoff to singleton decks, which many players really enjoy, but playing against him can be really frustrating, especially his next turn board limitation. It's been difficult to balance these competing player interests and we don't make this change lightly, but we felt Reno was due for an update to no longer hit non-minions Dormant minions, etc., so it could give starships a better chance to fly. So I'm on board. I'm okay with this. Um, I, you know, I wish the slower stuff could be better, but I think there's going to be other control stuff. Starship can enable those long games, and with cards like Kill Jaden out there, you can't play the fatigue anyways. But yeah, at ten, I would have loved to see this go down to like eight or nine with this effect. Ten, like, come on, right? But. Overall, I think it's, you know, time for other stuff to go, to play, to, to have a time to shine. And Reno, yeah, can take a back seat. Um, this will be a major impact in Wild 2, where Reno is very prevalent there. Um, I could see a reversion for Wild in a few months, we'll see. Uh, but overall, yeah, 
I, I think it was time and I know there'll be people that are upset, but I feel like there'll be a lot that are happy. And if we could play with new stuff, it's better than, you know, just spamming the Reno. And again, that feeling of when Reno comes down is crippling. It feels horrible. And um, I, I can get down with this change, but yeah, I can see it being very contentious. Lamplighter also getting reworked. Um, it will now be a four mana four, four. If you played an elemental last turn, deal four damage. So it no longer just keeps scaling. It's four mana four, four, deal four, similar to that four mana minion that if you're holding a four cost card, deal four. So it's just a nice tempo card. It's like fire elemental, but cheaper. So that's pretty good, uh, but it doesn't like outright nuke somebody. And we got dev comment of here. Elemental decks are designed to be tempo decks that can play for board and be aggressive. We want them to have some finishing power, but Lamplighter gave the deck more direct damage than we'd like. We think this change, instead of just making it cost more or only hit minions, better aligns with the goals for the archetype. It's very, yeah, it's, it feels like an elemental card. Blaze Caller, right? Similar to that, like, it's fine. That's, will it be a huge nerf to the deck? Yes, will elemental decks be top tier anymore? Probably not, but at the end of the day, it was only top tier because of a pretty disgustingly broken interaction, but you could still do the whole fire spell package and murder your opponent that way. That could be a ton of damage. So there might still be validity to it, but Lamplighter is not that win con anymore. Another card getting outright nuked, Sea Breeze Chalice well, stays at one mana, does the same amount of damage, no longer goes face. Spell damage druid is dead. You cannot kill this anymore. It's purely for control purposes, fighting for the board. It can only hit minions, which can be nice. Druid really lacks hard removal, early AoEs. They could run this as like a pseudo, you know, board clear, but probably not. It's a probably a completely dead card. And this is a huge impact for both standard and wild because wild spell damage druid plays this abuse is even harder and it's one of the best decks out there. So yeah, um, absolutely giant nerf and Mage basically hasn't played this card much at all outside of like some broken, I think there's some interactions that they did, uh, but even there, no, I don't think they really used it in like uh, OTK decks with like concierge. I'm not entirely sure. Regardless, con man. Yeah, it's going back. That was a mistake. Whoops, took a little too long to fix, but con man no longer plays from a non rogue class. It's from another class. You gotta burgle the card in some way or change your hero like Rogue can uh, with their whole uh, tourist card, right? So yeah, huge nerf. Um, you're not gonna get tsunamied into tsunamied anymore. And um, P Pipsy Paladin can't replay Amethyst into Amethyst and stuff like that. Absolutely awesome change. Glad to see it. Um, it just, it's so unhealthy the gameplay it promoted. And Seashell will also be from another class instead of a non-rogue class. So you can't just play Seashell into your Tsunami for cheaper or into your Amethyst or your Pipsy cheaper. You gotta play by other means. You can still get coins from that weapon, but this is again, purely more of a Burgle card and not super consistent mana cheat. It's welcome. It's a huge problem and they hit both of them. They didn't leave one. They're like, this is just, it's out of control. Both are scaled back. Sleep Under the Stars goes to eight mana. Um, I think it's still gonna be auto include in most Druid and Warrior decks. At seven, just obscene, ridiculous. At eight, pretty damn good card. We'll still see a ton of play. It's what, two mana draw to you, I guess, right? Or you can be flexible and gain some armor, uh, draw more cards, whatever, right? So still gonna be a really good card. You can ramp into it, but at seven, it was just outright nutty. And again, impactful and wild. A lot of these changes, impactful for wild. And here we go, Quasar. Yes, not just a seven, but eight mana. And I really appreciate the dev comment here where they, where they say, yeah, are bad. So they're basically admitting it was a mistake. So thank you for that. Every expansion, we like to make a few dreamy cards that get players thinking about how far they can push the game. These cards aren't supposed to be the most competitively viable. The fun of them is wondering what if. Quasar fell into that category. It certainly got the dreamers cooking and it hasn't turned out to be a competitive power outlier, but the experiences when this card does work are too sharp and end games too early, turning the dream into a nightmare to play against. So thank you for just, yeah. I like that they actually say, oops, you know, like that that goes a long way because everybody's human, 
everybody makes mistakes and I just like when they take some accountability for it, right? So that's really good. Glad to see that change, even though it wasn't a competitive outlier. They didn't go along the lines of that commenter the other day of saying to buff it or whatever. So yeah, you probably shouldn't lose to that. They want to prep it. It's going to cost them six mana. It's probably too slow. Now, um, everything must go. will now go from eight to nine mana for Rogue. Basically, Robocaller won't tutor this anymore, and it'll make it a lot harder to get those big, big scam turns early with Cycle Rogue, um, which is just super consistent and really frustrating, especially at Higher Legend. Uh, very prevalent strategy. Molten Magma, again, no more face damage, only minions. So this is purely more of an AoE to fight for board. Unlike Chalice, I don't think the card's dead. I think this certainly can see play, especially in like Asteroid Shaman. You just use it as an AoE. It scales well, very nicely with spell damage. It just doesn't give you that chip damage. And the burn decks in Shaman are really good. They can't use this with like Ethereal Oracle and just get that pretty darn good face damage along with board clear. And you get one of them now. So I think it's a good change, and I do think the card will still be playable. I think maybe the Soldier at six, probably still good. Um, but yeah, it slows down that giant scam turn by one. That's always relevant. Giving one extra turn is always a big deal. And yeah, you got all those tokens. You got to coin this on five instead of four or play it on five instead of six. Hopefully slows that deck down enough that other decks can compete. And if you want to stick a board, maybe it'll be a little bit easier with threads. Yes, going to three. This started at one. It's now three mana. And again, as I'm very biased as someone who loves Death Knight, I'm nearing like I'm, I'm nearing 4,000 wins already. It's been less than two years. I love Death Knight, but this card is too good. And at three, I still think sees play. Hero power threads on five is still pretty darn good. It's like in the line with Brawl and a lot of other board clears. I think it's fine, and especially you yeah, have other tokens on the board. You can just play it, do some good stuff. Um, but yeah, if you want boards to matter more, you can't have an AoE that just negates it, especially in a class as popular as Death Knight, and will still continue to be good. It's one of the best classes, and like Double Frost, barely getting nerfed outside of, Reska will now go from zero mana to zero mana, right? Like 20 to 25, it's something, but I feel like it's gonna be very minimal. Uh, Reska, I think it's still auto-include in every deck that still plays Reska. We'll see if it's, you know, if it's a big enough impact, but I feel like they could have gone a little bit harder on this one. Um, it's a just a, one of the best cards in the game right now. It's so crazy good, and we're slowing everything else down. Uh, five mana is just very, very minor in comparison to a lot of these other changes, but we'll see how that goes. Funnel Kick can still target whatever you want, but it's two mana. So you'll only refresh one, unless you've discounted it by other means. That is a very big deal. That's half the mana. And yeah, it's you gotta spend the two mana to play it. Um, and also Pipsy, right? Or not Pipsy, uh, Pip. Is it Pip the Po? I can't remember their name. Uh, won't copy this, right? You won't get extra copies uh, so easily in Priest. So very, very significant nerf. This one also standard and wild relevant. And well, speaking of that, we have the mystery egg, which this will pretty much, I finally think, deal with Lion Hunter in wild. Instead of going from four to five, they're just taking one more mana cheat off of it. Um, get a copy of a random beast in your deck. It costs three less. I kind of wish it just didn't give a copy. I wish it would actually draw the beast and keep the discount as is, but yeah, um, you get three. So um, in wild, the lion no longer zero. It's one. So that deck, I think, I think is finally dead and wild after two changes. In standard, this should still be pretty decent getting those plushes, getting uh, Mukla's, but it's instead of four or less, it's three, which is very significant. Um, but I think the card will still be playable, but we'll have to see. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy how much this egg has gone through. I remember when this leaked early, everyone was complaining how bad the card was, and it's been through some stuff. I know it got buffed, but I don't even know if that felt super necessary at the time. And for Wild Order in the Court, yes, it now draws a card with the comment of, on its face, this looks like a buff, because that was the original version before it got nerfed, and we got dust refunds for that nerf. And yes, we're getting a dust refund for basically this buff. And you can play this in other decks again, right? You want to play like Reno or whatever, 
whatever you, you could play this in other decks so it's just a different kind of look for the card again anyways but the intent of this change is to pull back on a play pattern that is warping the wild metagame with the introduction of ceaseless expanse the deck got a payoff worth going all in on a way that made the deck faster more consistent than ever before this change will still allow for big plays while skipping over the five, uh, turn five 100 damage holy wrath target with this change ceaseless expanse is no longer banned and you can still do holy wrath you can play like ceaseless shervala molten giants and deal like 25 20 damage right you can still do that um you just can't guarantee the 100 anymore unless you like do some dredging or whatever right you can still dredge it you can do that but it's going to be a lot less consistent and yes all these cards including master's call that card there full dust refund we'll talk about master's call in a second why there's some a bug fix that kind of addresses that and then yeah we got some buffs so when we looked at it the great dark beyond data we found some more of uh, some cards with room for buffs so we made adjustments across a wide range of new cards with an emphasis on promoting the expansion's marquee archetypes being Draenei, um, Librams, uh, Starships, all that. So Ascara goes from a five mana four five to a four mana four four, cheat out or copy out another Draenei, although it doesn't curve very well. It's a weird buff, but yeah, she'll be a little bit cheaper and still a beautiful card. Um, yeah, Didra or Dirdra, Rebel Captain. Yeah, you get two cards now. The Death Rattle will draw two crewmates. So Basically, you'll have two that are right away connected that you can play. Is this archetype going to be good? I would be shocked. It's so bad, but this helps a little, right? Same with uh, Borane Recruiter being a 2-3. Premium stats, sure. It's a good card too in Arena. Uh, you get a crewmate, you know, maybe it could trade a bit better, but the crewmates suck. I, I just can't see it. Uh, one of the better buffs though, Interstellar Star Slicer. Yeah, instead of the 2-2, two -two, where I want to be safe at all that, uh, they're making it a 3-2. So yeah, you get better attack, you can kill stuff, and you can break the weapon faster to discount your Librams just a little bit faster. Yarel going from a 5-mana 4-3 to a 4-mana 3-3, three -three, so a little bit cheaper. Get those Librams from the past a little bit sooner, but you do sacrifice a little bit of attack on that card. Bell Fire Thrusters gets an extra health. It would have been nicer, I guess, the extra attack considering the spell burst on the card, but hey, it's a bit of an improvement, so they have that to work for. This one spooks me a bit, but Shatari Cloakfield going from a 1-3 to a 1-4, it's elusive, so that could be harder to remove, and you could snowball cheating out those arcane spells. Really look out for this one. I don't really like this one. I would have probably left this card alone. I didn't think it was that bad. If anything, I would have given it an attack, but... Yeah, um, that one might be something to look out for. Unfortunately, uh, the Gravitational Displacer, just getting a stat boost, like, I, I don't know what that's doing. I, I mean, I'm not playing a 5-mana 4-3 anymore, but I'm playing a 5-mana five 5-4. Five that doesn't feel much better. So, um, yeah, not a mana cheaper. It it's just purely more stats, which, again, it can be relevant considering you get, like, the Hunter stuff, and then you're dealing more damage or getting, like, whatever, but still... I would have liked to see it cheaper. Uh, schematic, like I thought, it'll cost one less, the uh, Starship piece you discover. So basically like free, right? Or if you prep it, you're almost cheating a mana uh, on the whole situation. So that can be quite nice to try and get that Starship going. And yeah, screw the Shadow Step tax. Scrounging Shipwright, now a battle cry. It is a random Starship piece. So you still can't like, you know, discover and get the really crazy Starship you want. But you can Shadow Step this now, break dance, and get a lot of Starship pieces, but you do have to spend quite a bit of mana on them. So we'll see how that plays out. But there's like just no Death Rattle synergies. It felt pretty darn out of place. This is a crazy buff. Exodar going from an 8 mana 610 to a 7 mana 68. And they, they are aware this is a bit spicy, where they literally say, this last change is particularly spicy. We wanted to make sure that Starship's got a chance to shine. But we'll keep an eye on this one after all the changes go live to make sure we didn't push too far. Basically saying, screw it, we're going to push one card, like, probably dumbly or a little over the top 
if it's too good, we'll revert it. So that's basically what they're saying there. So we'll see, it is a bit spooky, but like this card didn't feel bad to me. When I played Starship decks at eight, it didn't really feel that bad. So I, I'm not like, that's why I didn't even predict it. I didn't even mention it because I didn't think this card was bad. I just felt like Starship stuff is too slow, not because of the Exodar though. So we'll see. Uh, Ace Wayfinder is now a four mana four four instead of a five mana five five. So you could play this and then like play a five mana Draenei get those effects that could be all right certainly something especially in arena that seems pretty good although you, again we're gonna have a video on Draenei because you it only works on other Draenei right and there's only so many so we'll see I'm gonna do a video talking about Draenei at some point my issues with them and I don't think the buffs really address any of that a dimensional core goes from three mana to two mana it loses an attack um yeah it's probably more valid to play I can get my starship divine shield or just start building it sooner, right? Because a lot of the cards that build starships, uh, it's if like the three or four mana, if you have the two drop into that, that could be really good. So certainly relevant. Astral Vigilant, which gives you the last Draenei you played, a copy of it, it's a one-two instead of a one-one, I guess, whatever, not a big deal. And yeah, BG updates. Um, the Master's Call thing, by the way, is due to this bug fix where there's various discover cards like Master's Call, Fauna Power, Crystal Song Portal, Omega Assembly, Marut Stone Binder, and some PvE cards have been adjusted to more clearly and accurately account for cards gained through discover versus alternative effects. We don't normally give refunds for these type of bug fixes, general rule updates, and these changes won't have any gameplay impact in most games, but we've decided to include Master's Call in this patch refund period due to its specific change interaction with uh, Alien Encounters, right? Alien Encounters would be like minus three mana with this card, so that's not gonna happen anymore. And this is, by the way, Master's Call is in the core set. You'd have to go into like your wild collection. I think it's a Rostikid's Rumble card of, it, of all things. And if you have that, you can disenchant the real one, the one, the collectible one, not the core set one for full dust. So that is a lot, a lot of changes. And I think this patch, Super promising. I'm glad they have taken the feedback of a lot of players that the power level of the game has been too much. It's not a buzzword. It's not a red herring. Power creep has been a real thing and we need to dial it back. And I think they see that too. And I'm glad that it's happened. I am still worried about, yeah, like Sonya, um, Zilliax are the two that stand out to me. But again, they hit a ton of stuff and they said if they need to, and they will be, uh, there'll be another patch before Christmas in the winter break. So yeah, I'll be very curious. I'll be playing ladder today on twitch.tv slash Zeddy, trying out, trying to launch starships, have some fun. And then we'll have our patch review tomorrow, uh, deck recommendations the day after, and we'll go from there. So again, to the Blizzard, Hearthstone team, on standard team, thank you. Thank you for these changes. Hopefully they go well. I'm sure there's gonna be issues. There always are, but hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.